just to give you a little bit of background, the idea is basically where we take apart elements of a track to kind of fully understand them. And it's a key educational tool that we use at Point Blank. And we use it to teach a whole range of different disciplines. So from production techniques to music theory, to critical listening, sound design, uh, DAW programming and mixing, to name a few. Yeah, we're going to um, do a demonstration of uh, Todd Terrier's uh, Inspector Norse. Has anyone heard this track? Okay, well, I think we should remind ourselves, if we haven't heard it, uh, remind ourselves what it sounds like. This is a, a little snippet from the video, and then we'll talk a little bit about the history. Here we go. Ganska se alltså vetenskapen som musik det det handlar ju egentligen om att jag älskar att dansa liksom och att det är enkelt att typa elektronisk musik som bara ger mig så jävla lust att dansa och jag känner att jag liksom må dansa när jag hör det då. Jag hade egentligen tänkt att flytta härifrån när jag var färdig med videon och varit här ett par dagar. Men, men så var det ju faren med psyk och sånt här och så fick jag liksom följt av rätt ting och göra det bli värande så här. There we go, an amazing video, an amazing jumper. So yeah, let's just have a look at um, some fun facts. This is customary with these deconstructions. Written by Terrio Olsen, um, Todd Terrio, not Todd Turge. That's how it's pronounced in Norwegian. He's from Norway. It was released in 2012, on June the 19th, and it came out on his label Olsen and Small Town Supersound, which is an Oslo label. It was featured on the It's the Arts EP, which I have here, purchased from Discogs. And it also featured on his album, It's Album Time. I looked last week and it racked up 18.7 million YouTube views, so quite a successful track. Star-wise, kind of as you heard, it's kind of a whole mix of uh, influences. There's the new disco, kind of space disco, electro house, and kind of very poppy as well. And one of the key features is it was made entirely using an ARP 2600, which we're going to look at in a minute. And that promo video that uh, we just watched was actually from a longer video called Whateverest. And we're going to watch a little snippet here. You can see the whole thing on YouTube. But this is just a little kind of part of it where he talks about making the track uh, on his ARP 2600. <laughs> Lagde en regel på mig selv, som var at jeg bare skulle lage lyder fra ARP 2600. ARPen er bare navnet på, på synten. Det er vel den kjappeste, de kjappeste fire låtene jeg noensinne har laget. Så so der vi går. A pretty cool studio. Så, so, this is the ARP 2600. It was first made in 1971 and ran for 10 years. And it's a semi-modular analog subtractive audio synth. Actually, very exciting, uh, this year at the NAMM show, uh, there are two new remakes of this that have been announced. Uh, one is by Korg, uh, and that's going to set you back £3,399. Um, not that everyone's really got that. But Behringer, who always come in with the kind of slightly cheaper 
versions of synths. They've announced one as well, but they haven't announced the price. So let's see what that's going to be. But we're making do with, well, I wouldn't say making do because it's a fantastic recreation. Uh, it's the Archeria soft synth version of the ARP 2600. So we're going to be looking at that in a minute. So there we go. We're now going to start the deconstruction. So I'm using this software here. Does anyone recognize what it is? It's Ableton Live. So this is, uh, point blank, this is one of the three main DAWs that we teach. We have Logic, Ableton, and Pro Tools. I've been using all of them for my career. I've kind of really mainly got to use Ableton now. The main difference are the two different views. You've got this session view and the traditional arrange view as well, the more kind of linear way of working. But this is really great for this kind of thing because it allows me to build up loops in these different clips. Let me just bring up my webcam here. There we go. So here um, I've also got a push. This is a push too, and this is the hardware controller that runs alongside Ableton, and I'm going to be using this to input some of the parts. And I've also got this Native Instruments M32 keyboard as well, and it's got these controller knobs here, so I'm going to be using that to actually kind of add some effects and things. Okay, I'm going to attempt doing this with the microphone. I normally have one of those head mics, but uh, let's see if I can do it. Here we go. Right, so uh, we're going to start off uh, programming the beat. I've got some drum sounds here. It off. Um, kick drum, snare, a clap as well. This is a hi hat. There we go. And it's white noise sweep. And then there's this sound here. I think we'll refer that to, we call that a, a little blippy sound. Um, cool. So let's just put in a, a basic kick beat here. I'm going to use the step sequencer. There we go. We're 120 BPM. Classic tempo. Um, let's put this snare in. There we go. So we're already getting there. We've got a clap sound. Let's put that with the snare. And let's record in this hi hat. There we go. And then we're also going to put in this blip sound as well. I'm going to record that in. So there we go. That is the crux of the whole beat. So I'm going to use the session view now to actually create some different versions of this beat. So the horizontal lines across here are called scenes, and this allows me to build up an arrangement of the track. So I'm going to do that now. So I've copied it down three times. This third clip here, I'm going to double the loop twice. And then at the start of it, I'm going to record this white noise sweep. And what that allows me to do now is actually flick between those different clips. So that's the one without the white noise. This is the one with the white noise. Cool. So I'm going to do a little bit more duplicating. And for this last one, I'm just going to take out the kick drum. There we go. So we've got five uh, clips and five scenes as well. So the next thing to look at is the bass line. And then just, let me just uh, show you the ARP 2600 that I'm using for that, because it's very nice. There we go. This is actually adapted from a, a bass sound called YMO Bass. YMO after Yellow Magic Orchestra, one of my all-time favorite Japanese electronic groups. So there you go, there's the sound. Um, but I think now is a good opportunity just to look at a little bit of music theory, which is one of the things that we can use these deconstructions for. Uh, OK, so I've got uh, some chords here. When I'm doing these deconstructions, the first thing I look to do is to find the key signature. 
and this will determine the actual notes that are being used in the song or in the track. The first thing to look at is kind of the, is to find the tonic, and the tonic is the first note of the scale, and it's the most kind of important dominant note within the track. So for this one, I felt that F was the strongest note. And it's got quite a kind of happy sound. Generally, happy is more of a major key and sad is a minor key. So that's major, that's minor. So if I played the F major scale, and let me just bring up my keyboard for extra graphics. There we go. That would be the F major scale, and it's got one flat. But then when I played, the, played, the, uh, played along with the track, I noticed that there was this E flat here, there. So what I figured out is that that's actually a mode, and it's the mixolydian mode. So it's actually F mixolydian. And quick thing about modes, modes are built on the degrees of a scale. So if I play B flat major, and I go to the fifth degree of that scale, two, three, four, five, and then play the same notes as B flat major. I get F mixolydian. Everyone following? Good. So the chords of this track are E flat major seven to F six. And the bass line I'm about to put in, we'll just play the root notes of those. There's a B section where it actually deviates and it goes to a G and then C minor seven. So there we go. I'm going to start putting in the bass line part now. So let's go over to the bass. Let's just uh, hide this. There we go. In first take, amazing. Okay, so something happened with the bass there. Let me just have a quick look. Just that, that note's a little bit too long, so I'm just going to shorten it. Okay, that's fixed. Okay, so um, as I did before, I'm going to now copy that down to the different uh, scenes. Now let's just put the bass line in for the B section, which is that G to the C. So we can now um, play this uh, A section and then go to the B section. So moving swiftly on, we're now going to put in uh, some chords. So uh, let me just bring up the chords again for you. We've got this chord here, which is the E flat major seven to the F six. Um, and I've actually mapped a controller to affect the filter cutoff. So, so let's put the uh, first part in. playing a kind of skank, you know, like a kind of reggae skank, kind of on the offbeat. But then for the next part, it then gets funkier. So let's put that in. And 
I can adjust the filter cutoff as I uh, as I mentioned before, but actually kind of play it in live. <laughs> So to give it a little bit more funk, I can actually put some swing on that. So let's do that now. Sounding good. Right, I'm going to duplicate that down to the fifth scene. There we go. Play between the sections. So then that brings us to the B section where it goes from that G to the C. And there are two parts here. One is a kind of arpeggio sound, and the other one is a pad sound. So let's just play the arpeggio first. Let me just quickly show you that chain so you can see what's going on. There we go. So I'm using the arpeggiator device here in Ableton. So if I took the arpeggiator off, you just have the single note. If I put it on and play a chord, it's magic. Cool, so let's, uh, let's record that in. I might have to tweak it a little bit to kind of make it uh, very clean, but let's put it in. So you can see there that the, the events, the kind of the end points of those, um, of those chords that I put in for the arpeggio um, aren't even. So I'm going to even those up now using some quantize. So if I hit uh, shift command U, that brings up the quantize and uh, it's quantized to eight notes at the moment and it's going to quantize the start and the end point. So there we go, I did that. Now, it's kind of, for some of them, you can see it's actually kind of gone the wrong way. So I'm just gonna manually drag that over. There we go. I've never done this before, kind of looking down the microphone. There we go, so let's play that now. Sweet. Let's now put in the chord to boost it up. So we've got the G major and C minor 7. Let's record that in. Great. So we've now got five kind of very distinct sections. Um, we've got this first one. Just the bass and the drums, the chords. And then the B section. And then the last one. So there's one thing left. There's actually two things, but the main thing we need to put in now is the melody. And that's probably the most important thing. So rather than record that in, um, I thought I'd actually kind of play that in live. But there's also this other sound I've got here, which is this. It's a little tom sound. I've, I've mapped this to the controller so I can actually change the pitch. There's a couple of other things as well that I've mapped. If I just um, solo the drums. Um, I've mapped the <coughs> release on the hi-hat. And also a reverb uh, on the snare and a delay on the whole beat as well. So what it means is that I can, as I'm performing it, I can actually kind of add some extra elements which make it a little bit more organic and, and live. So uh, I'd really like to just kind of play through the whole track and play the melody as well, but I kind of need someone to play 
this tom. So is there anyone in the audience that would like to come up and play that? Come on. It's going to be fun, honestly. Risa, are you in the audience? Okay, thank you very much. Put your hands together for Risa. Hi, Risa. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, so this is what you can do. It's, it's mapped to one note there, and then that changes the pitch. Okay. Okay, so you ready? Here we go. So, uh, Inspector Norse by Ski and Risa. Here we go. Thank you very much, Risa, and um, thank you very much for checking it out. Ski Okafor from Point Blank Music School. Thank you very much. <laughs>